So the next clip I wanted to talk about was an update courtesy of Tiger Belly regarding Brendan Schaub's spectacular the, the Brendan Shaw spectacular spectacle, whatever it's called, appearance the other day where he tried to make peace with Kalila and Bobby Lee and the Tiger Belly crew concerning the allegations of Reddit, of them of Tiger of Bobby Lee supposedly starting the flipping um Reddit page, the Fire and the Kid one, Home of the Homeless Cats now big up. Um so he tried to go on there and obviously try and squash the beef. It didn't happen. And then towards the end of the podcast he said he had evidence that basically proved that someone with access to the Tiger Belly email account had set up some account on Reddit that was posting crazy stuff to do with kids and stuff. I don't know, just some weird accusations that happened to happened to come out out of the blue um, at the same time, conveniently as he was getting attacked. You know, online he managed to pull out this Trump card to kind of save face. And um, yeah, he's, he's supposed to have provided some information after the fact, after the show was over, um, to prove that he did have this evidence and he wasn't just making it up in order to protect his back. But then George, the producer for Tiger Belly, updated us about that. And it doesn't seem like what he said is actually accurate. So let's play what they said. Hey, guys, we know why you're here. You want to know what happened after the podcast last week. So here is a quick follow up to that episode. As of today, we have not seen said 300 pages of documents. After the podcast, we were shown a couple of zoomed in screenshots of source code with no contacts. Our email address is in the corner of one screenshot and the name Robert Lee on the corner of another screenshot. When we asked him who sent these to him, he said, Brian, we then asked to be connected to his team directly to get further clarity. And he assured us that he would make. Excuse me? Let's go back again. What did he say there? Hold on. Hold on. What did he say there? Source code with no to that episode. As of today, we have not seen said 300 pages of documents. After the podcast, we were shown a couple of zoomed in screenshots of source. So the same things that he showed. Code with no contacts. Our email address is in the corner of one screenshot and the name Robert Lee on the corner of another <laughs> screenshot. When we asked him who sent these to him, he said, Brian, we then asked to be connected to his team directly. Brian, as in Brian Callan. <laughs> You're telling me Brian Callan was the source of the source codes. He was the HTML provider, Brian Callan, a person who was only recently copy and pasting, you know, url links into his instagram captions for his shows out up and coming like buy tickets here as if you can click url links and flip in captions of instagram feed pictures and shit that guy the guy who can't take an, an unblurry picture to save his life that one the one that doesn't understand lighting that one come on oh my god this story just gets getting worse weirder and weirder man to get further clarity and he assured us that he would make that happen we followed up with him for the next three days and finally on thursday we received a text from brendan saying his team would prefer to handle this issue in-house and of course they would of course after all this drama you now want to handle it in-house you now don't want any more back and forth you went on there imagine he went on their show and essentially accused the staff members of that show, including the, you know, the creators or hosts in Kalila and flipping Bobby Lee of orchestrating an attack on his reputation, on his person, on his family, affecting his bottom dollar, maybe leading to the, you know, to the breakup of his relationship, God forbid, touch wood, all this sort of stuff. He accused them of this stuff, right? Which is a pretty heavy ac accusation. So clearly, naturally, those guys are like, no, 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 no. You can't just come in our house. You can't just come in our studio and accuse us of such a thing. You have to provide us with proof so that if it is true, we can punish the person who did it and we can completely disavow and distance ourselves from that person because it's not something that we endorse. And also, we didn't think we did it, so we need to clear our name. He sits there, sits there, sends them what? Screenshots. Not even pdfs that he saved on his phone screenshots from a, what an email he got given or something zoomed in that shows robert lee now again not to be you know not to be that guy but 
do we really think Robert Lee's name on his like ID just says Robert Lee? Oh, sorry, Bobby Lee. Do you think Bobby Lee's name just says Bobby Lee? Do we not think there's other names involved there? Maybe an Asian sounding name, maybe a middle name, maybe something. Did he honestly think just because someone's name is Robert Lee that that would obviously equate to Bobby Lee? Come on, bro. And why didn't he just go on Reddit and just double check how easy it is to set up an account using an email that isn't yours? I'm pretty sure anyone can do it. So why would you automatically think that it came from somebody over there? And why wouldn't you just ask them? Instead of going off the handle and threatening and intimidating them over the phone and threatening to snitch and tell Rogan and their career, why would you go that far? Fair enough if you assumed it was. Imagine you found that it was, right? Imagine if you thought your friend stole some money from you because you didn't see your wallet on the table. Maybe you lost it, but then your friend was the last person to have it or to be in a room with you and you thought he had it. You wouldn't immediately go and, you know, and flip and spray up his house with bullets. You'd ask, hey, have you seen my wallet, bro? Oh, no, not really. Actually, it might be under the table. I saw something under the table. And you check, oh, yeah, there it is. You want to immediately go to level 100. Oh, fuck you. You stole my wallet. You're going to die. I'm going to end your career. You don't do that. So why don't, you just, why don't you just call them and say, hey, I've seen this evidence that maybe shows that you are behind this. Is that true? And they can say, no, nah, nothing to do with us. And then go from there. That leads me to believe that probably this wasn't, again, just my guess, I, you know, I'm just throwing out flipping theories out there. I, I know nothing. I don't know anything. This is all alleged. But this probably proves that this was an excuse or a lie that he fabricated. I'm talking about Brendan in an attempt to distract everybody from what actually was the issue, which is the DMs and the drug walk. And obviously the intimidate. You know what I mean, like that was a way to kind of get everyone to not pay attention to it. Like, oh my God, let's look over there. Zoomed in screenshots. And then Brian Callens is the source of it. Well, he said Brian. He didn't say he didn't say it was Callan. It could be another Brian in their crew. Who knows? Let's just put it out there. But if it's Brian Callan, this is a insane twist in this story. The guy who Brendan used to joke, you know, used to joke about him being computer illiterate and not be able to use his smartphone and unable to do social media. And now he's suddenly the mastermind behind an entire 70,000 strong Reddit subreddit. Are, are people, I think there's nicotine flipping pouches are going to his head, man. Does not feel comfortable sharing information with Tiger Belly. To recap, we have not received any substantial evidence regarding the accusations. We have not been in contact with the team. All we've seen are some screenshots sent to Brendan <laughs> from Brian Callen. We're oh, he said his name, Brian Callen. Oh my God. This is absolutely insane. Brian Callen. Nah, 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 nah. So what Kalila said in the other podcast, no, what Kalila said in the podcast with Brendan, which was like, oh, um, this isn't the first time Bren Brian has said something about uh, Reddit. Like he's used that excuse or he's, he's raged on people about the same thing before. So this might confirm also that Brendan, or sorry, Brian, sorry, too many Bs. Brian spends a lot of time on the Fire and the Kids subreddit and he must see everything. Hence why he's so wound up about it because he wants to get rid of it. And this is a good way to get rid of it, right? By associating, you know, harm to children and other kind of crazy stuff. I'm going to get some closure on this, but that's probably not going to happen. The good news is we have a great episode today. And we'd like to start by thanking our sponsors. Oh, my God. I can't believe this, man. Brian Callen is the mastermind behind this whole thing. This is absolutely insane. I'm going to... I'm going to throw out a little theory here. I'm going to throw out a little, um, my own little theory. What do, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Hear me out, right? What if Brian isn't really behind it? And what's happening here is Brian is basically paying Brendan back for his unrequenting support that he had for him when he was going through his rape allegation stuff. Because if you remember, Brendan wouldn't shut up about it because he mentioned it, you know, anywhere they asked him about the whole thing, he would, he would mention it all the time, which is, you know, the opposite of doing somebody a favor. But hey, he used to always mention that how when Brendan, when Brian, sorry, was being accused of rape, he 
um, when Brendan was being accused of rape, he took a break from the podcast. And the story is from their side of things that Brian was the one that suggested he should take a break so that they wouldn't have to cancel the whole podcast, right? He took a break, he stepped back, took a sabbatical, put himself on leave, whatever it may be. And at the time, Brendan went on podcast and said he still kept on paying Brendan despite him not being on the show because, you know, it's their show. And I guess he just pay whoever he got as co-host in terms of Chappelle and um, who's the other guy? Uh, Malik. He'd get the, I guess he paid him out of his wallet. I'm not really sure. But regardless, he'd always pay Brian his half of the show, whatever the, you know, the fee was, um, even though he wasn't on the show. Because he said, oh, this guy, you know, he meant so much to me. He got me in stand-up. It was like a loyalty thing. And it was a pretty decent thing for him to do. He mentioned it all the time, don't get me wrong. But still, regardless, he's still a nice thing for him to do. Maybe we don't actually know that, especially at the time. He was Also, Brian was going through a, a divorce, right? Or did it happen before or after? I'm not really sure. But regardless, he, I remember the article going up on TMZ about the alimony. The alimony was something like 20000 or something crazy a month, right? A mad fee. I remember hearing, watching it thinking, whoa. So maybe... That money that Brendan was giving Brian was a real lifeline. Even though Brian comes from money, I'm assuming at this stage he's probably, you know, he's not the most happy when he has to go back home and ask money from his parents because it probably comes with some conditions. So the fact that Brendan was still willing to pay him really went a long way in Brendan, in Brian's head because he was like, oh, wow, this is really my friend. And at the same time, too, Joe Rogan completely deleted him from his, you know, conversations on the podcast he's never been on there again since the allegations he hardly ever mentions him most of the comedy community out there in LA apart from the you know the fire and the kid crew don't really speak to him that much so maybe in Brian's head it kind of reinforced how much of a good friend Brendan was and now in an effort to repay Brendan he is purposely taking the heat and the brunt for everything, even though it wasn't just him. So maybe that phone call that he spoke about, about oh, people intimidating him, it wasn't just Brian. Maybe Brian is taking the heat for everybody in an effort to pay back Brendan for his loyalty when he was going through his rape allegations. And now that this stuff has happened, this lie that Brendan concocted about this, you know, Reddit thing and them being masterminds of Tiger Belly people, maybe... Brendan fessed up to Brian and said, you know what, bro, I'm lying, man. I just made it up because the heat was on me. Joanna's at home. She's complaining. She wants to, she's threatening to leave. I don't want to lose everything. Da, 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 da. Please help me. And then Brian's like, All right, cool. I'm going to, I'm going to help you. Just say I'm the one that gave you the, the, the docs and the HTML code. He's like, what you? Yeah. yeah. D -d 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 -d. Don't worry. Just say it. And I'll take all the blame. Maybe that's what's going on here because this seems so far fetched. That's legitimately the only rationale idea that rational idea I have in my head that would make some sense. That Brian's maybe taking the blame as a way to kind of say thank you to Brendan for all the support that he gave him over that rape allegations charge. Because that rape allegation charge, I don't know how he beat it, but he beat it. He beat it somehow, do you know what I mean? Because that's a mad thing to have on your docket especially at the time that he was going through. He was on Joker. He was got, he had his own spin-off show. He was in a show. He, things were going up for him, and then suddenly you get hit with that. It's basically a career ender, especially at his age. Um, maybe, but I just think that's insane. Brian, what? <laughs> Makes no sense, bro. But, hey, what can you do? I guess that's why the, that's maybe the end of it. But I just find it hilarious that how they're like, yeah, we want to deal with it internally now. <laughs> we don't want to, we don't feel comfortable sharing the details. Wasn't Brendan bragging about how he's got them, the details on him. It's on his phone. He's going to show it. Trust me. If, if I show it to you, I'll, you'll understand. You'll understand if I show it to you. You'll get it if I show it to you. You'll get it. Show it to them then. Let them see it. You, you said they're going to get it. Let them see it. God almighty, man, this is absolutely insane. I can't believe it. What a twist. Brian's responsible for it. Okay, cool. Cool, makes sense. Um, oh, big up, another super chat. Big up, Dennis Michaels. Appreciate you. $5 super chat. He says the following. Callan should be happy. Chang's is as tame as it is. I remember the Opie Anthony subreddit. Yeah, people always say that. I never used to listen to Opie Anthony, I guess from maybe because I was in the UK. But people always say how vicious their community was, especially towards the end when, you know, the guys started to break up and it was clear that the show was coming to an end. People were really, 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 really mad on there. So I can only imagine what that must have been like back then. Um, and people said the same thing about the Joe Rogan for a minute. 
Joe Rogan's forum was crazy as well. So that's why he had to shut it down. Um, the subreddit probably is the same, maybe as as him as well. But I, I do say I've kind of my my theory on this always is as bad as the, those communities are. <clears throat> my fear has always been most of the times from my own experience. Again, not I've not got many, much experience because I've you know not been doing this for a long time, but from what I've seen. Most of the toxic communities that surround podcasts and radio shows and comedy do whatever comedy teams, entertainment things, whatever it may be, it's usually because of the host themselves that the community is toxic. Usually, for instance, like think of someone like a Mr. Beast. Does Mr. Beast have a really toxic community? Not really. He might have people that don't like him. He might have people that think that, you know, he's manipulative or maybe whatever it may be. They might have people that literally don't like what he does. But in terms of his community, it's mostly good vibes. But you look at H3, good example. Ethan isn't the most likable person in the world. Um, you look at another one I'd use as an example is um, Call Her Daddy. When those two girls were together, it was fine. Then they split and the other girl everyone kind of hates. Um, you look at, who else I can think of? Very divisive characters who are like that. Maybe the, the, the Final Kids more good. Yeah, the Final Kids, yeah, the Final Kids are a good example, but people don't remember when it was good though because it's been bad so long. People don't remember that the show was legitimately good, and people used to root for sure. People used to email into the show before his fight card and be like, "Oh my God, we're wishing you 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 do well in your your performance." If you lost, they'd be like, "Yeah, don't worry, man, keep your head up." Like it was a really nice community, and then it just turned when obviously their egos got too out of control. I don't really know. Maybe it was that. Maybe they just. Well, always like that. Who knows? But I've always thought whenever the community is vicious, it's usually to do with the host. Don't get me wrong. They can be really trolly, annoying people online, but it doesn't come out of nowhere. If you're a nice, decent person who just puts out cool content, it's okay. But the other side of it is as well, I think, which is another thing, though, that's concerning. Or that not concerning. Another thing that maybe explains why these really toxic people have toxic um, communities. They just continue being toxic and don't change. Part of the reason why is a realization that actually the more marmite you are, the more like like a Tim Paul, for instance, the more people are like 50-50 on whether or not you are an, you are a piece of shit or whether or not you're an amazing news source, the better it is for your career. You actually can make millions of dollars and have hundreds of thousands of people follow you all over the place because you're so marmitey, like you're so 50-50 down the line. But if you're a really nice person all the time, it's hard for people to, you know, root against you. And then it's hard for you to also ascend to the really super, super heights that some of those people that I hated are. So maybe some of those people understand it and they play into it. I'm not really too sure, but, you know, whatever. We digress. We move on.